be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children because he was the son of his old age. And he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, 
where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph, so Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore. They took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There is no water in it. Then they sat down to eat. And looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. For he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified and, no one, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. 
The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came, walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Our story is unfolding. It always has been. The story of the earth and of the stars and of our sun. The story of people finding out how to live together has always been unfolding. The story of God known uniquely by people like Abraham and Joseph and Moses in Jesus, in you, that story is still unfolding. Joseph's life unfolded with God in ways that were entirely unforeseeable. Entirely unforeseeable. He might have ended up in that pit and died, or by the intervention of his other brother, he might have just been sold into uh, slavery and we never would have heard of him again and we wouldn't be here. We'd be elsewhere. But God unfolded the story in such a way, an unknowable and unexpected and impossible way, that Joseph saved his family's life from suffering, from starvation due to a famine. He became their salvation. By his own hand? No. By God's hand. Part of the story unfolded anew. But then a Pharaoh arose in Egypt who did not know Joseph. Meaning, the story, the honored story of this great governor this trusted, faithful seer of God was lost and forgotten, and Joseph's people, the children, the descendants of Israel, became enslaved in Egypt for many, many, many generations. So many generations that they forgot their own story. Forgot God, even. Some of them, perhaps. But the story unfolded further. And God, uh, and Moses walked with God, and God unfolded Moses' life in a way that he led his people to freedom. Rem reminiscent of how God hovered over the waters in creation, Moses raised his hand and the water of the Red Sea separated and created dry land that his people could be saved from the oncoming danger from fear, so that they might have new life in an unfamiliar land. Moses saved by this one great miracle, water, and then the second great miracle, the bread, daily bread from heaven. The people were hungry and they were afraid, and they wanted to go back to what they knew, which was the food of Egypt. Enslavement. That at least they knew, and they were afraid in the new land 
that they would not make it. They were afraid and filled with fear. But God unfolded the story further and rained down manna from heaven. Daily bread. Not more than your daily fill. Only your daily fill. Why? To discipline His people. To teach them that the only way to life is through trust that God will provide and be present. Trust. Faith. All four of the Gospels tell the unfolding of Jesus' life. We always need to remember that when we read the Gospels or hear the stories, what we are hearing is not the, the resurrected Christ. We are hearing the incarnated Christ. The people in the story do not know the end of the story. And in all four Gospels, there aren't many stories that occur in all four, but this, these two do. The feeding of the multitude and walking on water to meet the disciples in the boat. I believe that, that the way Emily Dickinson put this was tell all the truth, but tell it in slant. The Gospels tell the same stories, but they tell it a little differently so it just might hit you. You just might hear something you hadn't heard before. And in, in this telling of these two great miracles that allude to Moses, remember Jesus went to pray on this mountain and He comes down, He's fed the multitude, given them bread to eat in the wilderness when they were hungry. People who were so battered and afraid by the oppression under which they lived, the power of the Roman Empire, they were so afraid that they would go into the wilderness to hear what this one man had to say. Because they needed hope that something new might be unfolding. So Jesus feeds the people and He sends them away. He goes on to the mountain to pray and be near God. And He tells His disciples, go, take the boat and go. And this is where our story gets very close to theirs. Dare I say, frighteningly close. George would have a whole lot to say about this were he preaching today, having been very close, in fact, had the eye of the storm passed over him last week. So maybe that'll come up next week, who knows. But the disciples are in this boat and they are far from land, far from the shore they know, Safety. The wind, the strong wind is blowing against them and battering them and the waves are high. And they are filled with fear and last of all, who isn't with them in the boat? Jesus. The only man that they are following. The only reason they even are there, He isn't with them. Now I happen to believe this story is filled with truth. And a big piece of it is metaphor. For all of you who have been here many, many times before, you know I've preached about how this ceiling has a purpose. This building is made with a purpose. This ceiling is meant to look like the ribs of a boat at the hull of the ship. Because we are the disciples. We are in a ship together and we are on a journey and we don't always know where it's going. And right now, we are so far from the safety of the shore that we knew. The winds are rising. And I find myself filled with fear. Not every day, but every day that it comes, it's hard. And I know you feel the same. Where are we going? What's happening? Why can't we just go back to the shore? Because my friends, my beloved friends, the story is unfolding. 
We are battered, but we are not alone. We do know the rest of that story. That Jesus, exercising the kind of power that Moses, God's power that Moses exercised to separate the sea, to hold back the waters of chaos, the Christ moves over the water of chaos toward the disciples because only God can. And he reaches out his hand and catches Peter in his fear. I very much want to ask every one of us to pay attention to what we're paying attention to. Are you paying attention to the whirlwind right now in your life? Or are you paying attention to the promise of God with us? Our nation and our world are in a difficult time, yes. But you need to pay attention to your diet Maybe your food, well, always your food. But you really need to pay attention to the diet of your words, the diet of your mind, and the diet of what you're putting into yourself. Are you following the wind? Are you going with the wind? Are you losing your mooring and your bearing? Are you drifting away in the tumult and the rancor of the noise that's whipped up between people who don't know how to love each other. If that is where your attention is, then like Peter, you will sink. I will too. The only saving grace Peter had was the good sense to ask for help. The good sense to ask for Jesus' help. Now, I'm not here to suggest that Jesus is going to fix your life and put things back the way they were and take you to the shore you already know. Because that never has been the reality of our story. There may be other religions where that can be your reality, but in ours, we are on an unfolding journey with God, and God is with us. And our call is to trust that, to hold on to it for all our dear life, and to be, to become the people that Jesus breathed his peace into. When Jesus explained later in John's Gospel what it meant to feed the crowds and to have, uh, because there is, you know, don't worry about it, but there is no Eucharist per se in, in John. It is the feeding of the multitude. And when he explains what that means, he says, you have to drink my blood and eat my body which is utterly abhorrent, especially in Judaism, but in really in every religion, it's, it's abhorrent. But what he means, of course, is not the literal word. What he means is you have to take my whole life into your life. Your life will be sustained and filled. And it will unfold when you take my whole life, the life of God, into your being, your body, your heart, and your mind. And if you're going to fill it with fear, there's no room, and that's your choice. So in these days that are coming, these election days that are about to begin and unfold, the rancor and the wind are going to increase. The shutters on your house are going to shake. But we are Christians. And we are following Jesus on His unfolding story within us to be people of love and people of mercy who create the beloved community. Maybe we'll gather in this ship soon. Maybe it will be a while. It matters not because God is with us and the only message God has for you right now and always 
is to banish the fear from your heart. Live without fear. That doesn't mean you won't feel it, but live without it. Don't ever let it overcome you. Ask for the help you need. Call upon your friends. Find Christ in your brother and your sister. Maybe even in your priest or your organist or your ministers. Christ is with you always and forever and unto the end of the age. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For Donald, our president, for Brian and Henry, our governors, for the leadership of the CSRA. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for our congregation in Sandersville, Grace Church, and in our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, for divine providence in San Antonio de Guerra. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Frank, our bishop, for our clergy, George, John, Bill, and Erwin, and for all bishops and other ministers, for the members of the Stewardship Committee, for all who serve God in the church, for the members of our search committee in this parish during our time of self-study and search, that we shall grow in our commitment to one another and to the cause of your Christ, and may come to choose a faithful pastor to join us in our ministries in our parish, community, and diocese. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Bobby, Reese, Aria, Bill, Margaret, George, Lewis, Sid, Bob, 
Pete, Reba, Keisha, Lois, Alice, Norm, Julie, Daryl, Teresa, Bernice, Harry, Barbara, Edna, Mary, Rusty, Jeff, Melanie, George, Rich, Victor, Lonnie, Bill, Wayne, Janet, Winston, Dan, Andrew, Michael, Wayne, Betty, Jackson. In all those we remember in our hearts. For all who are serving our country at home and abroad, that they may be strengthened by the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, especially Joe, Dylan, Joe, Trey, Graham, Toby, Zach, Jonathan, Sylvan, Zachary, Bennett, Chris, Jim, and Andrew. For all students and teachers, as they begin a new year and face new challenges, bless them, O Lord, with the gifts of kindness and compassion, curiosity and joy, that in their work, learning and play, they become your beloved community. For all health care providers, first responders, essential workers, and all who offer of themselves in the service to others, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Give comfort and renew their energy, strength, and compassion. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease. That our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Ruth Schaefer. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. <laughs> God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. Good to have all of you here with us this morning. And John, thank you for your words. Um, very appropriate for what we are all going through. Indeed. Uh, several announcements that I do want to share. One is to always remind you of 
the opportunities for online experiences at St. Paul's that you can find on our website, uh, Church Online. All those opportunities are listed there. Also, for those of you who are pledging members of St. Paul's, I do want to personally thank you for taking the time to make sure that your pledge is current. Um, the cost and ongoing work of the church continue. And so, for those who are not pledging members of St. Paul's, please do know that our, your gifts will help make these broadcasts and this work that we continue to do together possible. So we do urge you to be a part in that way as well. Do you have anything else? Not at the moment. I think we're good then. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for... There is one more announcement, and that is we are so glad to have the organ back and not simply the organ back, but Keith Schaefer playing the organ, which makes it even more grand. So it's a great day. Uh, please do. Mention the postlude. Yes, uh, please do stay on for the postlude today, uh, which is Vidor's Takata. So that will be a treat for all of us here and all who are tuning in. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere 
to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, to forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where was St. Paul and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and to serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast that which is good, Render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all persons, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us this day and forever. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.